Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the National 5 2017 paper focusing on Section 1 Multiple Choice. If you haven't already tried this paper then pause the video now, try Section 1 and come back and use this to help you mark it. So here we have Question 1. Question 1 focuses on what would have been something that you're likely to have learnt way back at the start of National 5 and that is Average Rate. If you look at the front of your data book you can find the equation for Average Rate which is written as average rate is change in quantity divided by change in time. So in this reaction we have a time of 30 seconds and a quantity of 2 grams. So to do this sum we would do 2 divided by 30 which means that D would be our answer. Question 2 this is looking at atomic structure. So for atomic structure, you have three particles within an atom, protons, neutrons in the nucleus, and electrons around the outside. Your protons is the same as the atomic number. The protons and the neutrons added together give you the mass number. So our atomic number will be 21, and the mass number will be 45 if we add those together, giving us an answer of C. Question 3 is looking at ionic formulae. What is the charge in the zinc ion in the zinc dichromate? And you've got the full formulae there. You may wish to use the data book to help you. To use the data book, you want to look at page 8 of the data book where you have the group ion table. If you look at page 8, you'll find that dichromate Cr2O7 has a charge of 2 minus. We've only got one zinc for every zinc for every chromate dichromate ion that we have present, which means that the zinc must be of a 2 positive charge to be able to cancel that out. Zinc is also a metal, so only could have a positive charge, so A and C would be the only answers, and A is the answer for this one. Here we have a problem solving question looking at electrolysis of magnesium chloride. So we have magnesium chloride which we are electrolyzing at 730 degrees that means that magnesium chloride will be a liquid and when we electrolyze it we are turning that into magnesium and chlorine. Magnesium has a melting point of 650 degrees so at 730 degrees magnesium will be a liquid and it is less dense than magnesium chloride, so it will be on the top of the magnesium chloride. So our answer here will be D, a liquid on the surface of molten magnesium chloride. Question 5 is looking at acids and bases. So for bases, they are anything which will neutralise an acid, and they can be carbonates, oxides and hydroxides. Anything else is a salt. So here our answer is A, sodium carbonate. For this reaction, we're looking for spectator ions. So one way you can do this is to write this out as ionic formulae. So you take each of the parts of your ionic substance and you split it up using valency to help you get the charge. So silver is a metal, so it will be positive and has a charge of 1. We then have nitrate ions which you can find on page 8 of the data book and they have opposite charges to allow them to cancel. We then have a potassium ion, it's in group 1 so it has a charge of 1 plus and a chloride ion in group 7 so a charge of 1 minus. We're then forming silver chloride as a solid and potassium stays as an ion in solution and nitrate also as an ion in solution. Spectator ions are those which do not change at all from left to right on the arrow. So, so uh, the silver changes from being an ion in solution to being an ion in a solid. Nitrate doesn't change so we can cancel it and neither does the potassium, so that is our spectator ion. 
Another way of finding the answer would be to have a glance at the equation. The part that becomes the solid and precipitates out will not be a spectator ion because it's part of the reaction, so it's the other part that's left. So our answer is B. Here we have a balancing equation. The best thing to do for this is to just write it out and try and balance it as you usually would. So I'll rewrite out the equation and balance it in the way that I would balance an equation. So I write the elements underneath the arrow and I write down how many of each I have. So on the right hand side we have an odd number of oxygens. So I always try and get rid of odd numbers by balancing them. So if I put a 2 in front of water we now have 4 hydrogens and four waters because we've got two oxygens here and two oxygens here. That means that this is much easier to deal with. Now all we have to do is put a two in front of the hydrogen peroxide. We now have four hydrogens and four oxygens. That means that our answer will be C where we have X equals two, Y equals two and Z equals one. Question eight, we have 0 0.25 moles of a gas and that has a mass of seven grams. So if we look at trying to work out the gram formula mass, we would do mass divided by moles. So we have seven grams and we have 0.25 moles, which means that the gram formula mass must be 28 grams per mole. Now we have to look at each of these and work out which of those would give us a gram formula mass of 28 grams per mole. Now immediately it cannot be C or D because we have three carbons and each carbon is worth 12 so that would be 36. So it can't be either of these. So now we're looking at A and B. So if we have a look at A first, we have 2 times 12 is 24 plus 6 times 1. So overall that is 30. So the answer must be B, but if we check by working out the gram formula mass, we have 24 plus 4, which is 28. So B is our answer. So another one involving calculations here. So which of the following contains the least number of moles of solute? So for this, you're needing to do N equals C times V, which you can find at the front of your data book. So if you convert the volumes into litres before you do this, so we'll have 0 0.1 times 0 0.4, 0 0.2 times 0 0.3, 0 0.3 times 1, and 0 0.4 times 0 0.5. So our answer here is A, where we have the least number of moles at 0 0.04. So here we're looking at alkanes. So alkanes have a general formula of Cn, H2n plus 2. So all of these are C7, so that would be C7 h and then if we do 2 times 7 plus 2 so we our answer should be c7 h16 which is a okay question 11 again looking at organic chemistry so we've got two compounds here one with a double bond and one without so the compound on the left is an alkene and the compound on the right is a cycloalkane. You need to know how they both react with bromine water. So alkenes rapidly decolorize bromine water, whereas cycloalkanes do not because they don't have a double bond. So that means that our answer for this question is D, where compound X will rapidly decolorize bromine water, whereas compound Y will not. Here we're looking at combustion. So we have a compound that burns in air, air contains oxygen. 
and the products of the reaction are carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and water. So CO2, SO2 and H2O. So we're burning this compound in air, so we know that the compound must have contained carbon, sulfur and hydrogen. We cannot say for certain that it contained oxygen as we're burning these in oxygen so we don't know that the oxygen that has made the carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide and water has that came from the compound or has it came from the air. So all we can say for sure is that it contained carbon, hydrogen and sulphur. So vinegar is a compound that you learn about and it is a solution of ethanoic acid. So now we're looking at uh, reaction types. So we have here that a reaction is exothermic. So if we look at the word exothermic, we have exo for exiting and thermic for heat or energy in this case. So an exothermic reaction is one in which energy is released to the surroundings, which is B. which of the following diagrams could represent the structure of copper? For this you need to know what type of um, com element copper is. So copper is a metal. Structure of a metal is that of positive cores surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. So we're looking for positives and neg negatives and those negatives being electrons which would lead us to D. So A is a co covalent network P is an ionic lattice, C are covalent molecules, and D is a metal. Question 16. Which of the following metals is found uncombined in the Earth's crust? It says that you can use your data book to help you. I would recommend probably page 10 in your data book, where you have the electrochemical series. The metals at the very bottom of the electrochemical series are the least reactive and therefore most likely to be found uncombined in the Earth's crust. So if you look for the least reactive out of the four that you have there, you'll find that it's gold. Which of the following is not essential element for healthy plant growth? So this is coming from your fertilizer topic, where you would look at N, P and K. So N is nitrogen, P is phosphorus and K is potassium. So the only element here that is not essential for healthy plant growth is oxygen. The Haber process is an important industrial process that you learn about and you need to know what it forms and it forms ammonia, which is B. Okay, which of the following salts can be prepared by a precipitation reaction? Again, you may wish to use your data book to help you. You want to look at page eight where you have the table where it shows if things are soluble or insoluble. The only one which is insoluble is barium sulfate A. And then lastly, question 20. A solution of accurately known concentration is more commonly known as what? This is a definition you need to learn. See a standard solution. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.